I said, early morning Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He has risen. Hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. We just want to thank God. Hallelujah. For his presence and for his mercy and for his kindness. Oh, we are so glad to be in the sanctuary this morning because we came to give him all the praise and all the glory. Good morning to you early birds. Hallelujah. He rose up early, and guess what? We up early this morning, too. And I'm amen to recognize, amen, our risen Savior on today. We are just excited, hallelujah, hallelujah. to be in the house of the Lord one more time because this is truly the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. We are the St. Matthew's Baptist Church. We are at 1886 College Avenue in Livermore early this morning. Hallelujah. For those of you who doubt the fact that we was going to have service this morning, we here. They doubted the fact that he was going to get up. But guess what? He got up and guess what? We here. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask you to call for your uh, prayer for attention as we stand, as we in reverence to the word of God, to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. You have it, say amen. After these things, Jesus showed himself again unto the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on the wise he showed he himself. And there together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael and Canaan of Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and the, other, and the two other of his disciples. And Simon Peter said unto them, I go fish. And they say unto him, we also go with thee. And when he went forth, he entered into the, sh the ship immediately, and that night he, he caught nothing. But when, he, but when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not who he was. It was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they said, they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find they cast therefore now and were not able to draw it for the multitude of the fish. Therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved say unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he gird the fishers and coat unto him, for he for he was naked, and he cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came to the ship, for they were not far from land, but it was about 200 cubits, dragging the net with the fishes. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw the fire and the coals thereof, and the fish and laid thereof, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring the fish that ye have caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net and the land full of fishes, and a hundred and three, a hundred and fifty-three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net not broken. And Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples does ask him who thou art, knowing it was the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you this morning, God, just to say thank you. 
Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your kindness, oh God. We come with expectation, excitement on today, God. We are energized, oh God, but because you rose on today, oh God, with all power in heaven and earth in your hand, God. And for this, God, we say thank you. God, we say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness, oh God. Thank you for your love, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah for bringing us, oh God, to an opportunity for salvation, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah for fulfilling, oh God, your purpose on this earth, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for rising up with all power in heaven and earth in your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we came to magnify you on today, God. God, we want you to be in the service with us on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we want you to have your way, oh God. We yield this service, oh God, completely, oh God, and absolutely to you, oh God. God, have your way, oh God, in this sunrise service, oh God. God, have your way, oh God, have your way, oh God, have your way in the songs, oh God, have your way in the spoken word on today, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, someone needs to know, oh God, that you rose up, oh God, hallelujah, someone needs to know, oh God, that we're standing in the gap for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we lift up our families before you, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, use today, oh God, to bring our families back together, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh God, have your way, God. Be with our children on today, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Those who are sick among us, oh God, we speak and declare healing, oh God, because you rose on today with all power. We speak and declare healing right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we want you to have your way. We yield the service, oh God, completely, oh God, and absolutely to you. Have your way. God, we love you. We honor you. And we appreciate you, oh God, for all that you do for us. For all that you do for us, we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Hallelujah. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You got a right to praise him. You got a right to praise him. Hallelujah. You got a right to praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because this is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should be excited. We got a right to be excited. Hallelujah. We got a right to be excited. We got a right to magnify him. We got a right to glorify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Will you join me with me in a congregational song? It's an old song. We know it. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me, I'm singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. 
Jesus lifted me one more time. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Show your gladness, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. He didn't leave me in that mess. Hallelujah. He lifted me and he lifted you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just like to welcome you, amen, to the St. Matthews Baptist Church. Amen. The Dr. Alan S. Turner is our pastor. Hallelujah. Our announcements are coming. But just prior to your announcements, just take one hot second and reach over to your neighbor and just say good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday on you today. Hallelujah. Hey, man, you can give them a COVID hug. You can do just wave your hand. But hallelujah. Reach over in the bed and nudge somebody and tell them, wake up. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our announcements are coming at this time. Amen. The word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Psalms 33 and 4. Good morning. And welcome to St. Matthew's Baptist Church, where we see the excellence in you. We are so happy you could be here to worship with us today. The announcements for today are Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Pastor Turner is teaching on the book Basic Theology by Charles C. Ryrie. If you have the book already, great. If you do not, Purchase a copy, and we hope to see you all on Wednesday evening at Bible study. Sunday school via Zoom at 10 a.m. Please join us. Go to our website and click on the join to find the Sunday school Zoom meeting. The SMBC Feeding Ministry invites you to help us meet the needs of the community as we do so every Sunday afternoon. Please see Elder Derek Henry to volunteer to be one of our premier feeding ministry leaders. We are also accepting non-perishable, non-expired items such as canned goods. Mark your calendars for an event you don't want to miss. The St. Matthews Baptist Church Usher Board would like to extend a special invitation to all its current and former ushers to join in on the 44th Annual Usher Day Fellowship on Sunday, April 24th at 11.30 a.m. here at our building at 1886 College Avenue in Livermore, California. Food and Fellowship will be following Sunday worship service. Please send RSVPs by email to churchsecretary at smbclive.com. Thank you for your service. Once an usher, always an usher. We continue our three-tier color wristband system, which identifies in-person fellowship interaction comfort levels. Green is a traditional greeting. You may greet one another with a holy kiss or hug. Yellow is an elbow shake. And red is no interaction, complete social distancing. You should have chosen your wristband bracelet color before entering the building today, and we will respect whatever choice you have made. We love and appreciate all, whether on live stream, Facebook, or in the house. Thanks for rocking with us, and oh yeah, remember to govern yourselves accordingly.
Amen. Can we say amen again this morning? Amen. Happy Easter to all of the saints of God this morning. Amen. Let us give God another hand of praise this morning. I am so thankful. Amen. To be here early this morning. So thankful for the Franklin family this morning. Amen. Brother and sister Franklin, my soul is rejoicing this morning. Amen. And all of the saints that are here this morning, Brother Hall and McDonald, Elder Turner, we just had a wonderful time this morning just celebrating each other. Can we say amen? Amen. God is so great and so greatly to be praised. And we thank God for his holy presence this morning. Can we say amen again? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. God has been so faithful to us over this wonderful Easter season. Amen. And we have so much to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. I know that, amen, God is truly blessing us now. And I hope he's blessing you this morning. I know he is. Amen. As he is also blessing all of those that are watching us online. If you grab your Bibles in your hand, amen, we will not be before you long this morning, but I do want to give you, as the Holy Spirit has given unto us, the word of God this morning. Can we say amen? Amen. We'll be coming from the gospel according to the writer St. John, chapter number 20. St. John, chapter 20. St. John, chapter 20. And we'll be walking kind of through these verses uh, together. Amen. And ask that you just read along with me, St. John chapter 20, and we'll start at verse number one. Again, we thank God for the saints this morning. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. St. John chapter 20, uh, beginning at verse one, when you have it again, say amen. 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 And it reads, and the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taking away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we know not where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together, what? In a place, what? By itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping as she was swept. She stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and seeth how many angels, two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, that which is to say, Master. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father 
and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. If you be so kind, skip down to verse 24. Amen. Just for the sake of time. Are you there? Say amen. Uh, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus the doors being shut and stood where in the midst and said what did he say unto them peace be unto you and then said he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I want to talk from these words, the power of the resurrection. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful, joyous Easter Sunday, a Sunday where we can celebrate all that you have done for us. We thank you for this year. We thank you for this season. We know that the season of Passover is in this season. We thank you that, yes, the Passover lamb was given so that Israel could get out of Egypt. But Jesus is our Passover lamb that causes death to have no more dominion over us because he conquered death, hell, and the grave when he rose early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Now, Lord, we worship you. We thank you that you've joined us together on this Easter Sunday. We say thank you this morning. Have your way Holy Spirit. Use us today like never before so that you would get the glory. You would get the honor. You would get the praise. We came here for you and you alone and we say thank you in advance. We ask all this in the matchless and in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we pray. Every believer shout out together. Thank God. Amen. 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 You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. On this beautiful Easter Sunday, and yes, it is beautiful, uh, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. But we also celebrate, Brother Franklin, the year of the turnaround. This is the year that the Lord has promised us, Sister Davis, that he would turn our lives around for the better. This is the year of turnaround. But yes, today we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Can you say Resurrection Sunday? This is the time that we celebrate restoration. This is the time that we celebrate things coming back alive again. This is the time that we celebrate that God himself has restored that which looks like it was dead and brought back to life. And Jesus knew that the whole world, Mother Hudson, was relying on him to get back up again. Is somebody in your life maybe relying on you to have a rebound? Is somebody in your life relying on you to be restored, to get back up again, to have a restart? And in this morning, I want to talk to you about the fact that someone is waiting on you to get back up again. I know that life in so many cases and so many times has caused you to feel like you are beaten down, but somebody is waiting on you. There's a ministry waiting on you. Your family is waiting on you. Your children are waiting on you. Even your job may be waiting on you to get back up again, but the most important person is even yourself. Because see, you yourself have to have self-fulfillment in a 
accomplishing some things in your life that even the doctor or people said was impossible. But even your life today, the fact that you're here this morning is a miracle because some of us today can testify that the Lord's hand is on our life. Can you say hallelujah? Today's message is geared, Mother Turner, and pointed towards those of you who realize that there is great potential potential within you that you will no longer allow people or situations or things to keep you buried listen I have no desire to be pretentious I don't have any issues about the ambiguity of the circumstances of your life that dictate the idea that maybe there's something deeper in in what you've gone through and experienced so that you could see that maybe, just maybe, God has a bigger plan in your life. Maybe, just maybe, the experiences that you went through, you only saw it from the surface. But maybe, just maybe, God had a deeper meaning in the trouble you went through. Mm -hmm. I want to minister to those people who understand that the persecution, listen, the pain, and all the things that God has allowed you to go through in your life that caused you much trouble and tribulation were not for nothing. I want to minister to those people today who are here in the sanctuary and watching us online who have understood now that there, that everything that I've gone through was not just that people could see my cross but rather see my resurrection. Maybe, just maybe, the cross is what God needed to take you through so you could have a resurrection. And I want to talk to you today about the pain that you've endured. And we are waiting to see how God would get you up from this. Well, this is a story of Jesus Christ. Everyone knew that he died, Elder Turner, but no one believed, even his closest friends, believe that he could rebound or resurrect again. What do you do when everyone around you don't believe? What do you do when no one around you has the faith to raise you up? Can we talk about that for a moment? See, Jesus had rose up a lot of folk in his lifetime. Can we walk the script? He rose up Jairus' daughter. Y'all remember that? Uh-huh. Uh, who else did he rise up? He rose up Lazarus. Y'all remember that? See, he was always there to raise other people up. But in the text, now he has died. And here is the problem. He had nobody to raise him up. What do you do when you've been there for everyone else and they are recipients of what you bring? But now you yourself need somebody to get you up. And nobody is around. Can we talk about somebody this morning? You know the story. Go to 2 Kings chapter 13. Uh, there's a story about a prophet by the name of Elisha. Can you shout Elisha? You know, Elisha, he is the understudy of a prophet by the name of Elijah. It's that Elisha, Mother Hudson, that you know that told uh, Elisha, uh, told Elijah, uh, give me a double portion of your anointing. You remember that? And by that double portion of the anointing, Elisha one day met a woman uh, from the uh, land of Shunem. Uh, she was a Shunemite woman, and you know the story. She built him a beautiful little apartment. You know, Brother Franklin, you are builder. You know what I'm talking about. She built him a nice one-bedroom studio. Amen. So she, she blessed him. And, and one day as Elisha was coming through Shunem, uh, he said to his servant Gehazi, listen, what can we do for this woman? And Gehazi said, well, she doesn't have any children. And so Elijah said to the woman and to her husband, who are now well stricken in age, he says to her, you're going to have a son. The woman says to the prophet, prophet, listen, do not lie to me. I am built you a one-bedroom studio. The least you can do is not trick me with these words. But do you not know that the year later that woman had a boy? And that woman who was a Shunammite that was barren now had a boy because she blessed the man of God? Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. But the Bible says that one day, while that boy had now grown up in age, he was out there in the field, Deacon McDonald, helping his father with the crops. And by the beating of the sun, suddenly he fainted. 
And the father said to his servants, take the boy to his mother. Ain't that like a daddy? Didn't care. He just kept on working. Take that little boy to his mama. And when he got to his mother, the scripture says, Sister Franklin, that he died. And the woman then went to the servants and said, go and get me a cherry. Get me something so I can ride over uh, to Elisha, the man of God. And when she got there, Gehazi saw her coming, the servant of Elisha, and ran to her and said, what is wrong with you? And she said, all is well. She never told him what the problem was because she knew, Sister Davis, that the servant didn't have the power to help her. But she went to the one who prophesied to her that she would have the son. And when she went to Elisha, Elisha said to Gehazi, there is something wrong with this woman. I see a grieving in her spirit. But the Lord hath withheld from me what the reason why she's come. And the scripture says the woman and said to Elisha, my son is back at home dead. And you know the story. Elisha first sent Gehazi to try to raise up the boy. He said, take my staff and put it towards the baby. And if, he, if you put it towards him three times, let's see if he raises himself up. But the Bible said he did not get up. And so Elisha had to go there himself. And the Bible said that he laid on the boy three times. Hallelujah. And on that third time that he, raised, that he laid on him, the boy rose up from the dead. Do I have a witness this morning here today? And the Bible said that Elisha was able to raise the boy from the dead. Well, here's my problem. Elisha, just like Jesus, had done so much to help other people get up from their dead situations. But in 2 Kings chapter 13, go there in your Bible. The Bible then says, uh-huh, in 2 Kings chapter 13, and go down to verse 14, and when you have it, say amen. 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14, it says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof what happened he died and Joash king of Israel came down unto him and wept over his face and said oh my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof so what happened to Elisha he died what do you do when you've helped everybody else get up but now you're dying and no one has the power to get you up. Skip down to verse 21 because I want you to see here that Elisha, and I need you to hear me clearly, Sister Davis, Elisha had the anointing to be resurrected. Y'all going to catch this on your way home. He actually had the anointing on his bones still to be resurrected. The only problem was no one was present that had the faith to get him up again. Can I prove to you that he had the power of resurrection in him? Go down to verse 21 of that same chapter 13 of 2 Kings. And when you have it, say amen. And it came to pass that as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his what? Wait a minute. That means that Elisha still had an anointing of resurrection in his bones. Because as soon as the dead body touched his bones, that body rose again. You can't tell me. Now, if there ain't nothing in your bones, can't nothing come from the bone. Are you still here today? But the fact that he got up from that dead bone body means that there was resurrection in that body. Can you say there's still potential in me? Say that again. There's still potential in me. That meant that there was still potential of resurrection in Elisha. But here's the problem. God had no plan of raising him up again. So what happens when you're destined to recover, but no one has the power to help you? Can I tell you what you have to do? Turn to God. When nobody else can lift you up, only 
God can. Are you still here? Let's go a little further here. Now, go to John chapter 20, verse 9. Because in John chapter 20, verse 9, it was apparent that Jesus knew that he had to rise again. Now, Elisha never said that he would rise from the dead. But Jesus did. See, what happens when you're destined to recover, but no one has the power to help you, and truth be told, no one even believes, even after you've got back together again, that you can do it. Look at verse 9. It says, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. There was scripture that confirmed that he would rise again from the dead. Let's go to Psalm 16, verse 10. Let's look what the scripture says, where there was a prophetic message that Jesus would rise again. Even the messianic psalmist David wrote this psalm as a prophetic message that Jesus would rise again from the dead. In Psalm 16, verse 10, it says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Corruption. That means that he was destined to get back from the dead. Go to Acts chapter 2, just for a moment of time here. We're going to read some scripture, if that's okay with you. It's Easter Sunday, is it not right? Amen. We should want to read the Bible on Easter Sunday. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, verse 25, let's see again what Luke wrote about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, verse 25, when you have it, say amen. For it says, for David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, that he would raise up who? Christ to sit on his throne. He seen this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see what again, y'all, corruption. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Now, here's the problem, Elder Turner. The disciples believed that his body was taken, but they did not believe that he arose. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Look at John chapter 20 again, because when I read that part earlier that says that when they saw that his body was taken, then they believed. You got to read the preceding verse. Let's look what the Bible says here in John chapter 20, verse 8 and 9. It says, then went in also that other disciple which came first. Now, he's referring to John, uh, to the sepulchral, and he saw and Believed. Wait, what did he believe? Did he believe that he rose from the dead? No. Because look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. They didn't believe that he rose from the dead. They just believed his body was taken. Whew. So what do you do when the people that are supposed to be the closest to you still don't believe that God himself can raise you up again? I want you to find someone next to you and say, if I ever go down, will you believe that God can raise me back up again? Hallelujah. What happens when the people around you believe more than what seems to be appearing in their face than realizing that maybe, just maybe, that God has changed your predicament? Now look at verse 11 here. See, verse 11 says, But Mary stood without at the sepulchral weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchral. See, some people are keep looking for something that even God has changed. She's looking for a dead body 
when Jesus is a resurrected body. Some people in your life are still looking at what you used to be and yet still can't praise God for what you are now. Am I in the building here this morning? See, that's what the problem is. See, she was looking for a dead body, but Jesus was a resurrected body. Are you still here today? And look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, Jesus says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And she thought he was a gardener, because remember, this is a garden here. And said unto her, sir, if you have borne him hence, she's still looking for the dead body. Tell me where you laid him. And I will take him away. <laughs> Look at here. Jesus says, why are you weeping and why are you looking for me in the tomb? <laughs> Do you believe more that I'm dead than I can be alive? Are people believing more about your past than they are your present? Can you believe that God may be changing my present? Are you still focusing on what he did yesterday? Maybe just maybe God got something, got something better for you today. Have you ever thought about that? Can you say hallelujah? They believe more that he was taken more than he got up again. You've been there before. Others have believed and even helped you stay down versus helping you get back up again. Can you say glory to God? Go down to verse 16 here. Verse 16, Jesus says to her, Mary, she turned herself and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say master. Jesus says to her, don't touch me. I haven't went to the father yet, but go to my brethren and tell him I'm going to your daddy and my daddy and to your God and my God. And when Mary came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. You know what the Bible says in Luke? They still did not believe. Are you still there? What do you do when God has shown you what others haven't seen? See, Mary saw what others haven't seen. She saw the resurrected Christ Deacon McDonald and the other disciples hadn't seen it yet, so they had not yet believed. See, maybe just maybe God has shown you some stuff that others can't see. Maybe just maybe you can see things that others have not yet been privy to, and that's okay because maybe just maybe because you got up early this morning on Easter Sunday morning when others were still sleeping in their houses, maybe just maybe God is going to show you something that others could not see, and that's what what happened to the disciples Mary was still looking for Jesus now his main 11 boys because one had already hung himself the other 11 were still shut up in a house worrying about the Jews trying to kill them look at verse 19 and prove it to you the same day at the evening being the first day of the week as I get to a close the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them peace be unto to you. Are you still here today? Jesus has to come and say, listen, you're hiding because you think that they have the power to kill you. But I want you to understand that if they had the power to kill you, then they would have had the power to keep me down. I need you to understand this morning that you can have peace because I've resurrected from the dead. He says, peace be unto you. Hallelujah. Someone say, peace be unto you. He, listen here, God says here, I want you to stop worrying about idle tales. Go to Luke chapter 24 as I get to a close this morning. Luke 24 verse 11, uh, I want you to understand that the words were not idle tales. Jesus said this over and over again. Uh, he's telling his disciples, I want you to understand uh, because after Mary had told the disciples, listen here, that he rose from the dead, look at Luke 24 verse 11 here. It says, and and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. When Mary and the woman came to the disciples, their words seemed like idle tales. But God is telling you a word from your pastor, and you 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 and, and see, listen, you're just like that doubting Thomas. You're looking for more ways to dispel what he's saying than looking for the opportunity to believe. See, they were looking for more of a way to say she's lying than to say she's telling the truth. But look what the Bible says. In verse 19 of John, it says, what happens when you're still traumatized from the past? Because that's a disciple's problem, Mother Hudson. They were still traumatized. They, they were still struggling about the fact that he had died. 
The soldiers came and got him. He was, they saw him dying on the cross. John was there. The other disciples ran, but they heard from John that they had killed him. And the Bible says literally here that they are assembled in this house for fear. And what happens when you're still traumatized from the past, but God has moved on to the next chapter? Jesus says to them, peace be unto you. And listen, he doesn't just say it one time. He actually has to say it twice. And he says it twice because, listen here, if you go down to verse 21, he says again, then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you unto you. He has to say it twice. Why twice? Because first of all, they were still so traumatized about the fact that they thought that he was dead and now he's alive again and he's saying peace be in other words, let your spirit rest. Let your soul have peace. Stop worrying about what happened yesterday. God is doing a new thing for you today and you ain't got time to be worrying about what happened yesterday. You got to start praising God for what God is doing for you today and he says peace be unto you. Now listen here, since you need to understand what's happened to me, I've risen from the dead and I just need you to believe that I have been resurrected from the dead. I want you to disappoint somebody next to you and say, God is lifting you up. Yes, God is lifting you up. Jesus says it here. Since you cannot believe my word, believe my results. Hallelujah. I already told you some, some days ago, even about two years before the resurrection, that I was going to be risen erected from the, from the dead. But since you couldn't believe my word, believe my results. Hallelujah. See, some people didn't believe, Elder Henry, that you would come back from that sickness. Brother Franklin, some people didn't believe that you would resurrect again. Again, but if you can't believe my word, believe my results. Huh? See, while you on that sick bed, you told people, I believe God's going to get me up. When you were down in, your, in the dumps, you said, I believe God's going to resurrect my finances. See, they may not believe your words, but after a while, raise your hand and say, believe my results. Huh? Because your faith has produced a miracle on your behalf. Can you say hallelujah? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that after he himself had told his disciples, listen here, he says to them, listen, I have came back from the dead. You have peace. But Brother Franklin, as I close, one of the boys, Thomas, wasn't there. You know that old doubting Thomas? Thomas told the disciples, now listen, y'all, <laughs> I'm not going to believe nothing unless I see the nail prints in his hands. And I want to see where they put that spear in his side. Let me put my finger there. Then I believe. Because I think y'all seen a ghost. <laughs> see, some people think that what you are experiencing, it looks like a mirage to them. But to you, it's real. See, you ain't got to explain to folk what God is doing in your body. Just say, I know it's real. Because the scripture says that eight days later, Jesus shows up. Here it is, Deacon McDonald. They end there again. Thomas is still saying, now listen, y'all, it's been eight days, and Jesus ain't nowhere to be found. I told y'all you saw a ghost. And the Bible says, for every doubting person that doubted that God is going to change your life, he's going to show up again just to prove them wrong. See, this year, God is going to show up more than once just to show folk that he got his hand on your life. Do I have a witness today? I, I, I just want to prophesy that over your life. Just lift your hands if you believe that, that this year, God's going to show up again and work another miracle in your life so that everyone that doubted the first one is going to believe the second one because God is a God, not just of word, but he's a God of results. Do I have a witness today? And the Bible said that when Jesus showed up, he says, Thomas reached his finger in. He said to Thomas, now listen, Thomas, since I said peace to them and now they got peace, let me now give you peace. He says, Thomas, peace be unto you. And Jesus says to him, Thomas, since you didn't believe, take your finger, hallelujah, and behold my hands. He says, rich finger, your hands 
hand and put it in my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Since you couldn't believe my word, now look at my results. He said, believe what I said and just trust me and scratch out your hand. Do I have a witness today? And that's what God is saying to you today. All you got to do is scratch out your hand and believe. All you have to do is trust that God can do the impossible. And the Bible says that Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. Is that a word for somebody this morning? See, when God has shown you that he's able to fix your situation, when God has shown you he's able to take care of you, when God has shown you he's able to heal you, the least that you can say is my Lord and my God. Can you sit out your mouth, my Lord? And my God, has he not shown up for you on your job, my Lord? And my God, has he not taken care of your bills? Say it again, my Lord and my God. And the Bible says, then Thomas believed. But look at what Jesus says as I close. He says, Thomas, you believe only because you've seen me. But blessed are those who have not yet seen but believe. See, I wasn't there over 2,000 years ago and saw his resurrection. But the Holy Spirit has resonated in my soul and told me it's not a lie. And you know how I know it's not a lie? Because that same resurrection power that rose him from the dead lives in me. <laughs> and how do you know it lives in you? Because every time you were down and almost gave up, <laughs> it was that power <laughs> that I didn't see his resurrection, but I can still feel the effects of the power. <laughs> is, there, is there a witness here that got some results here today? I, 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 I can hold him to his word because I got my own results. See, some of y'all can't testify, but some of y'all can. I got enough results to know that the same Jesus that rose from the dead, he's still alive and well. How do I know it? Because I got the results that he's living in me. Every time I pray, he's answered my prayer. Every time I was in trouble, he made a way. Every time I was down and depressed, he lifted me up. Is there two of you this morning and somebody watching us online that can just testify on this Resurrection Sunday that if it it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? Can you shout hallelujah? Bow your heads and humble your hearts on this Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate what God has done in the life of Jesus, but also in the life of you. When you consider all that the Lord has done, your soul should be able to say, thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, on this Resurrection Sunday, we thank you. We thank you this morning. We thank you for the miracle of your resurrection. Because if you would have stayed in that grave, then our salvation would have been lost. But we thank you that you rose from the grave and you offered your blood before that holy altar in heaven for the atonement for our souls. And because of that, now by our faith, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We don't need to worry about death no more because death has no more dominion over us because you have conquered it. The Bible says that the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be risen first. And then we which are alive, that's the good news there because because of your resurrection, some of us may not even have to die we can be translated from life unto everlasting life. And for that reason, we say thank you. Thank you for your resurrection this morning. Thank you for your power. Keep your heads bowed. There may be somebody watching us today, maybe even here in the sanctuary, that maybe, just maybe, you have not made the decision to make Jesus your Lord. Well, I have good news for you. The good news is that God loves you in spite of yourself. He loves you enough to keep you alive long enough to give you a chance to say, Lord, save me. 
Because the good news is that even though you are a sinner, God has still made a provision for sinners. Because God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so this morning, Reverend Turner, what do I do to be saved? All you really have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead so that you believe you're not serving a dead Savior but a living Savior, then thou shalt be saved. Well, today, if you really want to receive Jesus in your heart, this is a great day to do it. I said this on Good Friday that there are many people that are celebrating religious days during this period of time but all of them have one thing in common they all are connected to Abraham but the good news is that the Bible says that even Abraham when he saw the Lord he rejoiced which means that the same Jesus that was there for Abraham the other ones don't yet believe it but that day will come that even the Muslims and the Jews will have to confess him as Lord and Savior can we say hallelujah but even today over 2.3 billion people across the world are confessing Easter Sunday as the Lord's Sunday. And so today, if you want to be a part of that great number, can you repeat after me? Can you say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins before you now. Forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for all of my sins. I believe that you were laid in that tomb. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. Save me now, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. And right now, I believe I am saved. If you prayed that prayer today, and you believe that Jesus Christ is in your heart, if you are saved, or maybe if you just got saved, either one, lift your hand and say, today I know I'm saved. If you know Jesus is in your heart and you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that you have translated yourself from life, un from even from life unto everlasting life, lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a great hand of praise around the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. You can be seated here in the sanctuary and those at home as we get ready for our offertory period. We thank God again for this wonderful day of celebration. Can we say Amen. Amen. As is is Easter Sunday, and I'm thankful to God, amen, for his grace and his mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell the folk, people say, Pastor, are you going to have early morning service? I said, sure I am. I was here last night to about midnight, amen, got to bed around 2 a.m., slept till 4 a.m., got up to be here. So I'm a little bit tired, but I'm thankful that I'm here this morning. Amen. Amen. Because we wanted to make sure that the saints had early morning morning worship. Can we say amen? God bless you today. If you need an envelope, you know, the ushers, uh, the deacons and ministers are there to support you with that this morning. Lift your hand. Amen. God bless you this morning as our deacons are in our position. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I told them we're not going to have no, amen. Bless you, son. We're not going to have any sunrise service breakfast this morning. Amen. Amen. We're not going to do that today. Amen. But Amen. If y'all hang out, Mother Hudson may put some grits on the stove for y'all. Amen. <laughs> amen. But to God be the glory. We thank God for the saints this morning. Can we say amen again? Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads and humble our hearts as we thank God for the blessed hope that he has given to us every day. We say thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you this morning again for this Easter Sunday. We thank you for the gathering together of the saints. We thank you that you blessed us to come and offer our tithes and offering to you today because we know that you are the faithful giver. We give unto you that which you have already given to us. We give it back to you because your word says to do that. And because we know that we can 
can trust your word because we have the results that your word is true. And so because we have been faithful in giving, you have been faithful in rewarding us with houses and cars and food and clothes on our backs. Every single day we have every provision we need and we say thank you for that this morning. Now bless the gift today and then Lord bless the giver. Let us all be used for the building up of your kingdom here on earth and we'll be so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor and all of the praise and we ask this in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Every believer say thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you're a giver stand to your feet. Amen. All around the sanctuary. We can give you a chance to walk. Amen. And bring it to the altar this morning as the deacon stands here in the middle section. Amen. He gonna make it convenient for you. He gonna help bring it to you. Amen. Thank God for these, amen, mobile deacons, amen, <laughs> amen, to God be the glory, amen. The whole church I used to go to, them deacons were so mean, they said, you better bring it up here, I ain't going to come into you, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but we thank God for these young leg deacons, can we say amen, <laughs> to God be the glory. Let's stretch our hands to the altar this morning, and those of you that are giving online, you can give on the website or through Givelify. Amen. We want to thank God for you as well this morning in Jesus name on this Easter Sunday. Father, we thank you this morning for that which we have been able to sow into the kingdom of God. We thank you for the good ground that we're able to plant this seed into. Just as a farmer plants seed and expects a harvest, we have given our seed today and we expect a blessing from you that the former and the latter rain will come even in this season of turnaround. That everything we need will come back to fruition and we will receive the blessings of God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. We thank you for it now. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we ask this in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Every believer say thank God. Amen. 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 Give the Lord another great hand of praise again in the sanctuary and those at home. God bless you today. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. God bless you. Actually, be seated before Forget it. Let's have communion. Can we have communion for y'all today? That's all right with you. Let's have communion this morning. Amen. We want to make sure. We gave it on Friday night uh, to the saints, but I told the preachers that we, if there's any day that we ought to remember what he has done through communion, it it'd definitely be during Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning. Can we say amen? Amen. We're going to ask amen that Elder Henry will uh, prepare himself and also, as the preachers prepare themselves, amen, to serve the people of God, amen. I'm going to read for you Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20, amen. God bless you today, and let's prepare ourselves. Let's stand to our feet for the reading of the word, our communion service this morning. Can we say amen? And for those that are watching online, again, if you are able to, if you have prepared yourself, uh, feel free to get some crackers and some grape juice. And if you say, Pastor Turner, I don't have any grape juice, as I always say, get some water, because if he was able to turn water into wine one time, he can do it for you again, especially for the sake of his communion. Can we say amen? Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20, it reads, And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you that I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you may the lord add a blessing to the readers the hearers and the doers of his holy word can we say amen let us bow our heads father we thank you for this wonderful easter sunday morning again we thank you for this hour in which we represent and we remember your death your burial and your resurrection we thank you for this hour of communion where we remember all that you have done for us. We pray that you would bless this bread that represents your body. We pray that you bless this fruit of the vine that represents your blood. And then, Father, bless even the, the partakers this morning that none would drink damnation to their souls. Bless this communion.
communion. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Everyone say, thank God. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. And Jesus sat down and the 12 apostles with him and said, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you that I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and said, this cup represents the new test in my blood, which is shed for you. But I will not any more drink thereof, even until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the bread and after he had given thanks, he break it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This portion of our service is only for baptized believers only. You can now go and serve God's anointed people. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, my Savior's blood. Oh, yes, it was my Savior's. Oh, yes, it was my Savior's blood. For me, oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Amen. Let us bow our heads and humble our hearts and ask the Father to forgive us for any sins that we have done that we have not yet confessed, those that we have done knowingly and unknowingly. Let's ask for forgiveness today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Amen. Please peel back the top portion of your cup that is going to expose the bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you have it, can you lift it today? Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us commune together. Now, please peel back the second portion of the cup that's going to expo expose the fruit of the vine that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you have it, can you lift it before the Lord today? Amen. This fruit of the vine represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us commune together. Oh, bless the Lord. Can we say amen again? Amen. Amen. Thank God for the saints of God this morning. Amen. As the ushers are preparing to collect them for you today. Amen. Look at that usher back on his duty. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Can we say amen? Thank God for our two doorkeepers this morning. Amen. Brother and Sister Franklin, can we say amen again? God bless you. Amen. Well, let's stand to our feet. Amen. Amen. I promise to get you out before a certain time, and I think I've kept to my word. Amen. Amen. That way you can go and enjoy the rest of your Easter day. Amen. Go ahead and reach out. If you trust the hand that you're holding next to you, just squeeze that hand. Amen. Amen. If not, we got sanitizer stations right behind you. So when you get through shaking that hand, you can sanitize your hands. Amen. Amen. Squeeze that neighbor's hand and just say, Happy Easter. And tell them, say, we love you. I love you. Amen. God bless you today. Lift your hands before the Lord today with your neighbor. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and the Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and the Lord give thee peace.
Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday morning shouted out together, thank God, amen, amen. God bless you, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Easter. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your day today. Amen. And have a blessed day in Jesus' name. God bless you.